Welcome to another edition of our on air series for Effective Living 2023 on the team 2023 Starter Pack. And this is our second week where we're focusing on emotional and mental health imperatives for the year. My name is Bernard Avler. Thank you so much for joining us on radio and television. This week we'll be focusing on various aspects of emotional and mental health. We've chosen to start today by looking at the emotionally healthy family emotionally healthy family it's really a topic i i stole and i need to be honest the, the topic was from a book i was given by my friend isaac jangma titled emotionally healthy spirituality and i felt well if spirituality can be emotionally healthy clearly families need to be emotionally healthy as well and one of the accredited trainers for this in ghana is the global ceo of the heart group a good friend of mine and of the station uh, originally a medical doctor but now a soul doctor. <laughs> doctor Yafebe, good to see you. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. It's good to be here. Is that a good description of you? Well, I see once a doctor, always, always a, a doctor. doctor. <laughs> it's just that now I work on the software, not the hardware. Which is more important. <laughs> Very interesting. It's great to have you. How are you doing? I'm doing well, by God's Amazing. grace. Yes. You're into all kinds of things. I know leadership is one of your big areas. Yes. John Maxwell leadership. Now you're into emotionally healthy spirituality as well? Yes. Well, I would say that uh, it's not something different. It's, it's an addition. It's some, another tool in the toolbox mm. because increasingly mm -hmm. uh, we are realizing that the emotional state of a person mm. ends up determining their success in one way or the other. Mm. In fact, uh, Harvard Business Review says that well, what now a lot of people call emotional intelligence actually determines 60, uh, sorry, 80 to 90 percent of wow. your success. Wow. 80 to 90 percent of your success, especially IQ being equal, you know, comparatively, that what's really going to determine your success is emotional intelligence. So, in mm. the, even in the leadership world, uh, there's a whole field now called the psychodynamics of, of leadership. Wow. Where, because you're realizing people are trained in Harvard, Yale, whatever, and then they do something totally stupid. <laughs> you're like, where did that come yeah. from? You know, so it's become a big deal. Mm. Uh, so I'm, I'm really, yes, yeah. really into, into and emotions. And I coined it emotionally healthy families. Yes. F families, what, what do you think? How, how important is family in this conversation? Mm. Well, you're asking the right guy because mm. <laughs> I'm a family fanatic. I have seven children. Mm. It's not an accident. Yeah. Um, but yes, uh, family is absolutely essential. Mm -hmm. um, I, I usually say that there are these six or seven C's. I mm -hmm. say why family is important. Number one, it, you know, I know most of Ghana is religious. So from the creator's mm -hmm. uh, perspective and the creation's perspective, mm -hmm. you know, God first created family, first made man and said, it's not good for a man to be alone and so created family. Uh, then from the creator's own pers perspective, uh, those of us who are Trinitarian believe God is Father, Son, Spirit. That's a family right there. Mm -hmm. At the center of the mm -hmm. universe mm -hmm. is a relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, so family is so important. Then there's what I call the the cellular perspective. Just like, you know, everything can be broken down to atoms, everything biological can be broken down to cells. The same way the whole of society can be broken down into mm -hmm. family. That's the unit of society, the unit of. So family is key. Um, another perspective is what I call the cradle perspective. Mm -hmm. It said that the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. Mm. I mean, if our societies are in a mess, let's check what's happening at the family level. You know, because literally parents shape the world by how they, they shape their they, family. They, they shape their, their, their family. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I, I, I call something the COVID-19 perspective. Exactly. <laughs> because guess what? When all, uh, all important cells and everything, you know, all important jobs shut down, where did mm. we go? Back to lockdown. Home. Boom. Family. All of a sudden, we realized, mm. I mean, all of a sudden, WHO was doing these adverts, huge adverts, all they were saying is, stay home, go home, you know. <laughs> they probably have done that many years ago. <laughs> yeah. You know, so family is absolutely necessary uh, and, and, uh, yeah. for, 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 all, for all these reasons. And we know there are, the, are these main centers of influence of society, yeah. like the arts and entertainment, business, you know, uh, academia, religion, all of that. But at the end of the family day, what still affects all of them is family. Why emotion? Mm. Mm. It's a good question. Emotions are incredibly important. Mm. Um, why are they called emotion? They literally move us. Okay. They literally move us. Uh, we like to think we are rational beings, basically, but we're mm. actually emotional beings. Okay. If, you, if you go out and ask why are you voting for A and not B, you'll be surprised some of the answers you get. Oh, you know, yes. Remember the days of General Rollins? Tell me. Hey, 
never can you know, yeah. never find it. <laughs> like, what about the policies? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we, we emotions move us, yeah. you know, literally. Mm -hmm. uh, the other reason why emotions are so important is without taking care of them and then be part of our total development, we are not full and fulfilled human beings. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an incredible component of our beings. A lot of times we think about the intellect, we think about the physical, the social, the spiritual, and we leave out the emotional. Mm -hmm. uh, we are not full without without the emotional. The other thing is even since I mentioned spiritual, uh, people like Scazzaro, who you've been reading, uh, say that it's actually impossible to be spiritually mature while wow. remaining emotionally immature. That's a big thing to say. That's a big statement. It's impossible to be spiritually mature mm -hmm. without being emotionally mature. Yep, and I see it. Even even pastors, even big men, you know, something happens, they're like, oh, why are you shouting like this? Or whatever, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so that's that's a big deal. Wow. Emotions are a big deal. In fact, in fact, you know, if you remember the, the, the Jewish people, and of course, Christians as a derivative of that, mm. the, the most important law is to love the Lord your God with all your heart. That even starts. Before, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. And this is the first. This is the first commandment. commandment. You know, so the emotions are incredibly important. And like mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. the whole area of emotional intelligence has become a big thing. You know, since Daniel Goldman made it popular in the 1990s. Mm -hmm. But IQ B equal. What would determine your success is your emotional intelligence. You've already explained the fact that emotions are part of the toolkit. Yes. Because I know you are into leadership development, mm -hmm. you are into missions and a lot of things. But how did you get involved in emotional health <laughs> you can, as an area? Yes. You can be sure I didn't go looking for it because I, I always thought emotions are kind of softy, softy, you know, so let's do it's not, it's not You know, it's not a hardcore issue. Let's focus on, the, you know, this metric and that yeah. vision and this and that. Yeah. Um, I, I, was doing, I was doing a master's in leadership in the US and one of our required readings was a book by Scazzaro actually emotionally healthy leader all right and as I began to look at it and how emotions, how we are supposed to lead out of the strength of our marriage and how, mm. emo I was like, oh my goodness, mm. this is, whoa. Mm. So that, that's what got my attention, you know, when I realized that, wow. And, and, and if, if I may, I know we are focusing on family, but uh, it, it takes deeply transformed leaders to deeply transform society. Okay. You know, and, and a lot of times, Emotions are like, uh, what we see is the tip of the iceberg, mm -hmm. you know, the behavior of people and, you know, even the attitude. But underneath is a whole rock of emotions. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You know, so these, this is how I got into it because, in fact, I wouldn't have picked it, just the emotion on the book cover. <laughs> but I was so required reading. It, it, yes. was, it was an eye-opener, the emotionally healthy leader. Oh, absolutely. Well, was, and, 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 a, and a game changer mm. because it changed the way I continue to do marriage and the way I raise my family. Mm. So some of the things I'm going to share here are actually things that we practice as a family wow. as a result of going this route. Wow, this is incredible. The, so let's talk about signs of an emotionally healthy family. So let's mm. start from the steady state and then let's go into <laughs> other, other things. So I, I'm sure it's, it's not an exhaustive list, but just yeah. give me a couple of, a few of the if, if a family is emotionally healthy, what are some of the things you would notice about them? Great. If a family is emotionally healthy, one of the key things is that emotions are not ignored, mm -hmm. especially emotions of sadness, mm -hmm. anger, mm -hmm. and fear. Mm -hmm. These are things that, particularly in Guardian society, kind of, you know, it's like you, you, can't, you can't express sadness, you know, or fear. Who's going say? Who's going say? You know, <laughs> that kind of thing. So, uh, Bermans. <laughs> That kind of thing. So, mm. uh, a sign of emotional un unhealthiness mm. is ignoring okay. these emotions of sadness and anger mm. and fear. Um, a, a sign of emotional unhealthiness would be, uh, 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 call it, dying to the wrong things. Mm. You know, there are things that God has given us to enjoy: family, mm. Mm -hmm. friends, music, name it. And some people, yeah, they're, 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 everything's dead. It's like you know, it's like <laughs> you're like, well, how, how dare you enjoy life? <laughs> you know. It's it's supposed to be serious, you're supposed to be, you know, so, yeah. so living to <laughs> the right things, not dying to the wrong things. Um, then denying the past mm. uh, is one of the signs of unhealthy mm. families, denying the past impact of the present. Mm. You know, a healthy family is one that realizes that, oh, great grandfather was a drunk, grandfather mm. was a drunk, father's a drunk, we need to do something about this situation. You know, or in our family, you know, women beat men. Let me mm. change the narrative a bit. Mm -hmm. You know, acknowledging the effect of the past on the present. Mm -hmm. Very, very important, mm -hmm. you know, uh, as a sign. And then uh, one side of emotional unhealth, 
unhealthiness is spiritualizing away conflict. Spiritualizing away conflict. You know, yeah, you know, there's a quarrel for mother, father, or, you know, father, son, or whatever else, like, Abunsamu, and Abunsamu, Abunsamu, yeah, you know, this one is the devil. The, you know, there's a lot we attribute to the devil to side. We actually give him too much credit. I'm not saying he's not alive and doesn't do his things, but, you know, you know, I lived in the, in the, in the, in the <laughs> North, North America for about, about 12 years, and uh, I used to say that the devil works, he works in Africa. <laughs> But he lives in America. <laughs> we see all his, we see his signs, you know, right? But 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 they make him so comfortable out in the West that you know yeah, the, the witches, the, 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 he, he, can, he can relax there. That's where he lives. But he works here. But honestly, you know, spiritualizing away conflict, and this tends to happen especially with with you know you know spiritual people. It's like mm -hmm. you know, deal with the conflict, deal with what it. And there's there's a whole thing called false peace. Mm. A lot of us settle for a false piece. You know, but let's talk about it. Let's bring it up. So, yeah. um, and then there's covering of a brokenness and weakness mm. and failure. Mm. And, and I think it's been made worse by the charismatic movement that does not have a theology for dealing with death, for dealing with grief, or dealing with loss. There's no theology for it. So you have a you have a bishop who can't have children. And he doesn't know what to do with it. What's wrong with him? Has he sinned? You know, so these are sudden signs of unhealth. You All know, right. covering over brokenness. This is effectively the main series. Just to yes. recap, we are talking to Dr. Alpebi, and he's on a roll. I, I hate to come in, but just to let you know, <laughs> if you just tune in, we're talking about emotionally healthy families. This is um, uh, day one of our week two, and he's really set us off on a real exciting conversation. Family is critical, both for the creator and the created level, at the cellular level, the cradle level, and also even the COVID dimension. And EQ is now responsible for 80 to 90% of our success. He's also spoken quite eloquently about the role of emotions in success and the fact that an emotionally unhealthy family ignores certain emotions like sadness, anger, fear, and then dies to the wrong things. <laughs> you know, I like the quote, how dare you enjoy life? Emotionally unhealthy families deny the past and its impact on the present. And then they also spiritualize conflict. And then they create a sense of false peace. And then they covering over their, their, their weakness, other things like this. So mm -hmm. maybe let's wrap up there and then we jump into uh, how to deal with some of these things. So mm -hmm. I, I like where you're going with this. And you're talking about the charismatics not even having a theology. For yes. grief, you know, and I mean, I've gone through, I'm, I'm going through grief, that's right? right. And it's that's an interesting right. thing you say because in my grief, I, I found a lot of things mm. which the traditional system couldn't give you, mm. all right? Even discovering yourself and how you grieve, that's right, because you would not know that there are different ways of grieving, that's right, you know. So, that's very right. interesting points you made. I wanted mm. to just elaborate a bit on that, and then we wrap up on the science of an emotionally unhealthy family, then we come into how to deal with those, okay. Yes, like, you know, um, so Skizera talks about enlarging your soul through grief. Okay. And it's actually a borrowed, something borrowed from the, from the, from the church fathers, the mm. early church fathers, the mm. first 400, 500 years of the mm. church, mm. Uh, that grief actually has a way of expanding our soul. Mm. Uh, but a lot of us will not sit long mm. enough in, in grief because mm. it's anathema. Why should I, you know, life should be upward and upward and upward and upward. Uh, so, and, and in this country, we've had, uh, you know, cases of very senior ministers, yeah. for example, yeah. you, know, you know, losing children or some other kind of, tra and people just don't know how to deal with it. Yeah. You know, even some of them, you could tell, yeah. not sure how to deal with it. So it's something we need to bring back mm -hmm. and get a holistic view of scripture mm -hmm. and theology, mm -hmm. you know, because God himself, it's a suffering God. Mm. You, you, you think you know how to suffer. We think we know suffering is. <laughs> take under look, the hands of his children. Take, take a look at God. Yeah. You know, so it's a dimension I hope we can bring yeah. into the discussion going forward. You mm. know, how do you, how, if, if a child is depressed, let's say clinically depressed, mm -hmm. how does a family deal with it? Mm. You know, my dad will probably say, you know, to win him, to win him. You know, <laughs> mm -hmm. straight in your face. Yeah. You know, but it's not a face thing. There's something going on. Mm -hmm. It could be physiological. It could mm -hmm. be environmental. It could be whatever. But so we we need to. Luckily, Doctor Delali Fiabe will deal with awesome. mental health tomorrow. Awesome. Or on the next program. So that that's, that's covered. Great. So. And yeah. then sometimes there are certain 
unspoken or sometimes spoken commandments in a family okay. that give us certain emotions or attitudes set to towards certain things mm -hmm. that affect us and we don't even realize it. Mm -hmm. Typically about money, mm -hmm. you know, about conflict, about mm -hmm. sex, you know, mm -hmm. this family, we don't, yeah. you know, uh, about, we talked about grief and loss, you know, expressing anger, but yeah. about money in particular. Yeah. Uh, it's like, you are not a human being until you are rich. Hey. Uh, yes. You're a human when you're born, but you become a human being Until you when you, you know, things, little things like that affect mm. how we relate to yeah. things like money. Uh, I remember reading a story about a guy who, every time he became a millionaire, he would get back into, he would get back poor. Every time he got, he made a breakthrough here. It was later upon analysis that it was realized that subconsciously, his mom had brought him up to think that every rich person is a pig. Yes, greedy, wow. yeah, you know, all that. So he makes money and unconsciously he blows it. He has the wrong concept you about know? So wow. it's absolutely important. Um, these commandments we have in our families about success, relationships, and you it's know, interesting attitude to say they towards are un other they tribes. Are unwritten. A lot so of times they are not necessarily very overt. That's right. But it's there. That's right. That's right. Mm. How we feel towards Airways, mm. how we feel towards Asantis. Mm. It's, it's all there. Yeah. You know, and we don't even realize it's happening mm. because it's under the radar. Mm. You know. Now there's a guy called Beaver who Beaver. who came up with this schedule. I don't know whether we can go through it. Yeah. Uh, he has the scale of okay. family functioning. Mm -hmm. Level five is the lowest. It's called the family in pain. Mm -hmm. There's level four, it's called the borderline family. Mm -hmm. Level three is the rule bound family. Mm -hmm. Level two is the adequate family. Mm -hmm. And level one is the optimal family. Wow. Um, let, let, let me read through some so of them. So family in pain is the lowest. It's the lowest level borderline five. Borderline is the next yeah. rule so, bound. So family in pain is a severely disturbed mm -hmm. family that's dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. It's characterized by disorganization, feelings of apprehension among its members, and permeating mm -hmm. sense of imminent danger. Mm -hmm. It's ghost-ridden and marked by losses that go unmourned. Mm -hmm. The passage of time is routinely denied. It lacks authority and clear leadership. Little in the way of dependable interpersonal connections. And you can actually, it's actually analogous to nations in civil disorder. <laughs> you know, you can say that this is a family in pain. Uh, that's the level five. Level four is the borderline family. This is an improvement of level five. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's a, a swung to the polar opposite mm -hmm. where it is adopting a rigid system of rules. So everything is by the book. You know, so disorder has been supplanted by dictatorship. Mm. <laughs> you know, um, I used to have a, a bit of that growing up, just a bit of that. You know, when the car goes, how goes bumper? It's got it. You know, I'm not saying we're level four. I'm not saying we're level four. You're taking the old man on, on national television. <laughs> you, come, you come at me. You know, uh, patterns of dominance and submission reign. There's mm -hmm. strict surveillance mm -hmm. designed to control not only actions, but also the thoughts and feelings wow, of and, everyone and in the family. militarized. Exactly. <laughs> I like that. You know, and black and white perceptions. One is Intolerant of ambiguity. An mm. individual is either perfect or monstrous mm. in one or the other. Now, level three, called the rule bound family, mm -hmm. is, is also, of course, there are also rules, but this time the members themselves have internalized the rules, all right, and are forcing it on, you know, so it's not one dictator or parent dictator, it's the, 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 the mm. dictatorship has spread, mm -hmm. so to speak. Uh, family participants abide by unquestioned conformity, their oughts and shoulds. Right, the rules of the system take precedence over anyone in it. There's loss of connection with one's own emotional life, which must be repressed for the good of all. And uh, it limits the potential for intimacy. Level two, the adequate family. Adequate so family. This, is, this is very, has a lot of characteristics with the, with the optimal family. And it's, just, it's very egalitarian. People are able to listen attentively and be able to get input from all members. There's true intimate encounters among family members. Uh, rules are clear, but not written in stone. They're not you know, they are flexible, uh, flexible emotional system, having the capacity for structural growth and change. Mm. And, and then the optimal family, let me end with that, is, is able to adapt better than all the previous levels. Mm -hmm. um, when life cycle events come, changes come, the security and trust in the emotional connections, there's a firm belief in the possibility of working out conflicts mm. or if not respecting differences. They accept both love and hate within themselves mm -hmm. and others in the emotional system. A full range of feelings mm. can be expressed and is even embraced. Mm. The individual yeah. differences are viewed as enriching. Mm. All right? And experience, people experience genuine pleasure in one another's company. Wow. So that's the whole all, course. That's the whole course. And I'll and encourage everyone of us. Is there a book reference? 
Um, I'm sure if you just Google Biba, you can, you can find it. We Biba. use this a lot. In, uh, mm -hmm. You know, in, in, in family medicine, we use these things as well. Mm -hmm. I encourage people to take a look at these five and ask yourself, where, where, are is, you? where, where, where is our family yeah. at the beginning of 2023, yeah. right? And where do we want to be yeah. by the end of 2023? Set me thinking. Family in pain, borderline, rule-bound, adequate, optimal. That's this right. is still effective living series. Dr. Alpebi is really taking us on a ride into emotionally healthy families. And as I say for all the topics, this is basically an initial dipstick. It's, mm. it's not exhaustive. Mm. We'll probably bring him back in the course of the year to talk again about this because these are very important topics for the, for the month. So we have 10 minutes to wrap up. What I wanted you to do now was to give me some tools. That's right. You've explained the, the framework. Mm. You've given me a system of measurement. So maybe I'm in a dysfunctional family mm. or I'm, I'm a family in pain or a borderline family. <laughs> what do I do? Awesome. Very good. One of the key tools mm. I like to propose to people, mm. when, when it comes to emotional health, mm. two main things, the ability to recognize mm -hmm. your emotions and the ability to regulate those emotions. Okay. Right? Even in emotional intelligence, you're able to do that. I recognize your emotions and managing them and then recognizing the emotions of others and how to manage them. That's basically what, what, what it is. Uh, so when it comes mm. to recognizing emotions, mm -hmm. I, I would like to propose and sub, a simple tool called 5-5. Five five. It could be 10-10, ten, ten, it could be 2-2, two, two, but I'll explain that 5-5. Five 5-5 five. Five five is this. I will, better than I'm going to illustrate. 5-5. Mm. 5-5 uh, <laughs> five five. Five five means I'm going to take five minutes to express how I feel. Mm -hmm. And then after you also take five minutes to express how you feel. Okay. Sometimes when, when my wife and I are you know, uh, in a hurry or whatever it is, we do 2-2. Two, two. Two, two also works. Two minutes each. Two minutes each. But you can even do 10 minutes each as you, as you grow mm. in this area. Now, to start, for most of us, we are not even, we don't even have vocabulary for our emotions. And so we start with these four basic words. I'll ask you, how are you feeling? Mm -hmm. And then you answer, I'm feeling glad mm -hmm. or sad mm -hmm. or mad okay. or bad. Okay. Just those four. So you pick one. Glad, sad, <laughs> mad, or bad. Yes. Only one positive. <laughs> <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So when you answer, you say, oh, I'm feeling glad. Mm -hmm. Then all I say is, tell me more. OK. Then you elaborate. So the person goes on. Mm -hmm. And the person may stop. Then you all say, you repeat, tell me more. Oh, yeah. Until the two minutes or the five minutes or the ten minutes is up. You'll be amazed how many emotions come up and things that... Pass Can I use it with my kids? Oh, yes. Yes, we do it. In the Are you feeling glad, sad, mad, or, or bad? bad. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you'll be amazed. But I say to, uh, uh, you know, I'm a bit ashamed to say, but I learned these things as an adult. Can you and mind? my children are learning them, you they, know... They'll do better They will do better. Yeah. They should do better. They have to. You know? So... You just go, and you don't say anything when somebody says something that makes you want to go on a target. No, so not discipline judgmental. yourself. So just let the person do their exactly. five minutes, and then exactly. do your five minutes. And how do you reconcile the two? Well, I mean, you can, depending on how much time you have, etc. You can sort out. I just think that you said I don't agree. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but at least it allows those two yeah. minutes, those five minutes, for people to express so that's the themselves. Five five. That's the five five. Mm -hmm. um, maybe for our viewers, uh, we could. There's a, there's a wheel of emotions okay. that I can share because we can, right we'll, now we'll put it on the screen. Great. Yes, right anyway. now, when I ask, how, you know, let's write down all the emotions we felt Spectrum over the last of emotion. 24 hours. Okay. So I'll give you a few. Tip, yes. Uh, happy, mm -hmm. anxious, mm. disturbed, mm. Um, excited. Great. Um, what else? Have you felt all of these in the last 24 hours? Y not excited, but <laughs> I just, I, it's, 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 it's too big an emotion. Great. But, I felt a bit anxious. I felt happy. I Great. felt fulfilled. All right. And I felt concerned. Awesome. Oh, within the same one yeah, hour. You are, you are amazing. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, you, you are in touch. A lot mm. of people cannot mm. come out with more than four. And sometimes it's because people don't have a language for okay. it. You know, so in that spectrum, what are some of the words oh, there? Oh, it's amazing. For example, bad. Mm -hmm. Remember, we just talked about those four. Glad, yeah. But if you look at bad alone, mm -hmm. bad, it could be bad in terms of what? Are you tired? Okay. Stressed? Busy, I feel bored, I'm indifferent, apathetic, pressured, rushed. All under bad. Well, all under bad. Out of control, sleepy, and all focused. Under bad. All under just bad. And under sad, you have what? <laughs> Plenty. <laughs> you have even more. Wow. Under sad, you can have 
others like lonely. Uh, is, because you said sad, but what kind of sad? Okay. Is it lonely? Is it vulnerable? Okay. Is it despair? Is it guilty? Is it depressed? Wow. Is it hurt? Is it embarrassed? Oh is God. it disappointed? Is it feeling inferior? Feeling empty? Feeling remorse? Feeling the funny ashamed? thing. If we even push this further to our local language, <laughs> yeah. we don't have with like three. Do, do, you, do you even have the words for some of these emotions? It will be very interesting to because find that out. then tells you that because the way the emotion is even described in an English way, yes, may not be even expressed in that's a traditional. Right. So that's right. That would be interesting to. Yeah. that's a great assignment if, if to look Kitea at. If were alive, you probably <laughs> have helped us to do <laughs> to do that. So yeah. in conclusion, what? what yes, we we'll do this exercise. The five five. Yes. The wheel of emotion. Yes. What's your final takeaway for families in trying to? set up a framework for emotional health in 2023? I will strongly ac ac encourage um, family times. I realize mm -hmm. a lot of families don't have a family time. Mm -hmm. At least once a week, mm -hmm. let there be a family time where you sit, you discuss, you know, what are you thankful for? Uh, and and that's, that's, another, that's another tool you can look at. Uh, you ask, what do you appreciate? And people say, I appreciate this, I appreciate that. Even our two-year-old is able to say, I appreciate daddy, you know, to be able to say that. Then next thing is, what are you puzzled by? Mm -hmm. And then ask, I'm puzzled that you took my toy and gave it out without telling me. Wow. You know, the little children are able to express these things. Mm -hmm. um, then next thing is, what do you notice and prefer? This is basically complaining, but you don't put it in a whiny <laughs> what do you way. Notice and prefer? Yes, <laughs> I notice that these days, daddy wakes me up at 5.50 instead of 6, and I prefer that he wastes the alarm goes at six you know what do you notice and prefer you know and then my new information is oh grandma is wow. coming to visit tomorrow wow. you know because sometimes even couples don't share new information with each other so like, oh is it today that your uncle said you come you know that kind of thing and finally <laughs> i hope hope expressing hope is one of the most powerful things you yeah. can ever relate to somebody about yeah. i hope this week you know i'll get an a in my exam oh mm. i hope that you know the prices will the dollar will come down or whatever That's you it. Know? i really hope I, that <laughs> <laughs> but i hope these are some handles i, I will know, br i'll bring you for, back for no, I, I need to bring you back yes. too, too much. Uh, <laughs> forgive me because we've sort of committed ourselves to 30 minutes yes. and we have to be committed to the 30 minutes it's also part of growth discipline. that's right but dr Apebi, so long as it's available we'll come back on air to delve deeper into this. And if you have time to get this book, mm. Emotionally Healthy Spirituality, Emotionally Healthy Leader, I'm sure there are dimensions of emotional health that this gentleman has explored. Thank you for watching another edition of the Effective Living Series. My name is Bernard Avila. We'll be with you next time. Bye-bye.